Well, today on Nation, the window cleaning podcast, let's talk about are you ruining the industry? Maybe not you, but other people may be ruining it. Lots of things, lots of errors, how you may be possibly hurting yourself in the long run. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com, and you are here. What is going on? Good morning. How are you? Good afternoon. What are you watching this? I don't know. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, yes, this is uh, always unedited, so I usually stutter around, but there's 150 episodes. We've done this 150 straight weeks, which is crazy. Crazy. Go back, listen to it. Uh, hopefully you dig them. Hopefully they're better than a cat video. And uh, yeah, maybe you get something out of it, right? But if you're one of the nations, somebody who watches every episode, you give this video a thumbs up on YouTube. Huh? Huh? And more importantly, you order your supplies through me. What is up? It is because of you that I get to buy brand name Crayola Crayons. For all my drawings that go up on the fridge. So thank you very much for all that. And if you want to buy from me, that would be absolutely epic. Uh, 862-312-2026 is my number. Call me, text me, whatever. Throw everything in your cart. Be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Shoot me a text. I'm going to give you a code at the end of the show also for 5% off and free shipping. So make sure to listen to that. Uh, but thanks, guys. That doesn't cost you any extra. That's how I make my cheddar. And uh, hopefully you get something out of the show. And if you want to, people ask about the Patreon thing. Uh, I would rather you put orders in through me than the Patreon right now. Uh, maybe someday. But if you want to give back to me, that's how you do it. If not, that's cool too, man. Hopefully you get something. Hopefully this makes you millions of dollars. Um, but either way, let's get into it. And today we're talking about um, how you could be possibly ruining the industry. Now, that's a harsh title. I know it's a harsh title. I didn't want it to be so harsh, but it's kind of clicky, right? Maybe it makes you want to actually listen to the episode. But there's a few things that you could be doing that would be not only hurting yourself, but hurting the industry as a whole. And people sometimes don't realize that the industry is uh, changeable. That's a thing. You can make changes to the industry. How you do things can change the entire industry. Now, it starts in your area and then it goes out. You'll see a lot of things here that we're talking about that people do around you and it completely changes how people then view you. And if they change how they then view you, if they move to another area, it changes how they view the next window cleaner in the next town and then those people see and then those people change and it's a whole thing. It's like the... uh contagious uh uh industry ruining virus oof oof that was a that's a bad pun I don't, know. I don't know what i'm doing anyway so here's a few things first off if you're doing any of them it doesn't mean that you're really ruining the industry i think you can change these are just dumb things that i know i've seen over the years kind of tarnish the industry now i'm just some dude with a microphone and a fancy piece of wood. Uh, but uh, these are my thoughts, at least. And and here's the real thing. I get emails every now and then, or comments on face on uh, YouTube, which, by the way, are even more important. Uh, comment down on there. Uh, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, there is hundreds of views on every video. Um, we do way more on the podcast side, but there's not a way to kind of interact. If you're watching it on YouTube... Go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Uh, that would be awesome if you did that. And comment down below. Just say what's up or pull a Ryan Fuster and just give me the random thumbs up. Um, but uh, if you're doing any of these things, you can change. You can kind of do things a little bit different, but hear me out. Hear me out on why I think they are what they are, and we'll kind of go over that. Now, the show idea spawned off of a guy named Andre Holmes. Uh, he's actually close to me here, super cool dude, uh, but he gave me a really good idea, and I tried to work a whole show around it, but uh, it's tough. I think I may touch on it again, uh, but either way, thanks to him for the idea. If you have a show idea too, 
shoot me a text at 862-312-2026 and, and let me know. But the first one that I think really tends to ruin the industry is just doing crappy work. Now, Jay on uh, Facebook groups is very big into, he says that doing quality work or doing good work is how you get referrals, it's how you build a business, it's all that. 100% agree that that is a huge part of it. Now, there's a lot of other things that go into it where I don't necessarily agree kind of to um, that's the only thing he says you shouldn't spend money on advertising, that kind of thing. But I completely agree with you in quality work. And here's the big thing. like We're always seen as a glorified janitor. I'm just going to say janitorial, but janitor, really, right? We are, and that's part of the fun of the industry. I love when you tell people at a party, uh, and we've talked about this before, but people are like, oh, what do you do? And I never, ever would be like, I own a window cleaning company, or I own a business, or any, I always go, I'm a window cleaner. And I just watch the reaction, because there's some people out there who, uh, that, it's not a stigma, but they still are like, oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's cool, right? Oh, my wife is calling, and you're like, ah, I wasn't fancy enough for him, darn, right? So I love hearing that. I love telling people that I'm just a window cleaner, and they're like, no, I mean, there's glass, everybody's got windows, right? They're trying to make you feel better, like, thanks, buddy. And they don't realize you make $75 an hour. It's part of the awesomeness. By the way, stupid story time, sit back and relax. I had somebody one time, so we do Cruise 2, but we were training somebody new, and I was on site doing, it was a first or second day training on this guy, and I had stopped on site also. So there was four of us on site. And um, this lady is just screaming at her like teenage daughter, screaming at her daughter, blah, blah, blah. Now, mind you, we're cleaning windows, so the windows are open, screens are up, you know, we're doing all this, all of us on site. She goes, if you don't keep effing around, you're going to end up like these guys cleaning windows. If you don't stop messing around, you're going to end up cleaning windows like these guys. And we kind of were like, what did you just say? Now, mind you, I pay my guys pretty good. Uh, the new guy coming in was like, oh, okay. But we kind of did the whole thing and it was a really funny thing because we realized afterwards that our hourly rate that day for the techs that were working on that job was like $90 an hour or something. It was a great house that we did that house for a very, very long time. Um, but it just was one of those super easy houses, but was uh, high, lots of windows. So it just happened to be higher on the, sky, on the money thing, right? I thought, man, we got back to the office and uh, one of the guys was just really kind of bummed out about it. Like, I can't believe that, you know, going angry. And I said, listen, like, this is what she paid us. She paid us this. But people don't realize what they pay. So anyway, there you go. But doing crappy work in the first place makes other people think that all window cleaners do crappy work. And you're like, oh, that doesn't make sense because there's crappy everything, right? But hear me out. How many times... Have you heard, my water fed poles don't work. My customers, my customers, they say you better not use that water pole thing. That's because somebody did crappy work. I could hand somebody a squeegee for the first time. They've never used it. Hand it to them. Say, go clean that window. What is it going to happen? It's going to look like a dinosaur sneezed on the window. It's just going to look awful. They're going to get done and go, oh, uh, they're going to, eh, you know, start in the middle. And they're nobody, if you do something wrong with a tool, it makes it look like crap no matter what the tool is. And here's the other thing on that. By the way, if you're not into pure water, I love pure water. Just because I sell it, that doesn't mean anything. I've been in pure water for 12 years probably, myself cleaning, like way back before. My first pole, my first pole was like $2,800 pole. Because they didn't have that kind of stuff. Anyway, I digress. Um, here's the thing. If you get up to a window or you hand a squeegee to somebody new and they squeegee that window and um, at the end of it, it looks like crap. They go, oh man, I got to practice. But if you hand the same person a water fit pole, they do it and it spots and drips and everything else. They go, this doesn't work. Why the difference? Because you don't understand it? I don't get it. But it's a tool that 100% works. It's science. You literally do it right, it has to work. 
the pure water, if you scrub everything off the glass, you rinse properly, there's nothing in the water then to leave spots. You can't magically get spots if there's nothing there to leave spots. That's like putting no gas in your car and going, well, of course it's going to drive. It still will drive. No, it's science. It needs gas to run. Right? It's the same concept. But here's the thing. When you use a tool incorrectly, or you speed through it, or your guys or girls that are working for you speed through it, do crappy work, what happens is then everybody assumes that that particular tool, if it's water fed, or that our particular industry does crappy work. Oh, you get a, a window cleaner? You have your windows done? No, I don't use window cleaners. We've tried them in the past. They're just all, they all suck. They just, they don't care. Well, that's an awful big generalization, right? Yeah, but I've tried a couple companies and they're all the same. Okay, you've tried the wrong companies. There's always going to be garbage things out there. There's crappy, you know, window cleaning suppliers. There's crappy products that are sold in the window cleaning industry. There's crappy car companies. You know, there are just so many things out there that there's the bad version and there's the good version. And it's kind of like when you look at uh, the industry as any product, any hobby you're into, what hobby are you into? Whatever hobby you're into, there is an ex, uh, expensive side of things that are like ultra premium awesome, and there's a bad side. And the ultra premium awesome ones, maybe it costs a little bit more, but it's amazing. I know a guy, and this is stupid. I know this person doesn't listen to this, so he's never going to hear it, but this is dumb and <laughs> this is the biggest waste of money I've ever heard in my life. But he's a fidgeter like I am, so I kind of get it. And he's at a desk all day. Uh, but he bought a $95 top. A top. You know, the thing he spin. Yeah, no joke. Let that sink in. A $95 top. Well, that top is probably the greatest thing. It's some kind of weird composite. It spins for like three minutes. It's perfectly weighted, like calibrated and weighted down to the millionth or something stupid. It's absolutely just like the most kind of uh, amazing honed perfectly crafted thing i don't get it but that exists right you don't go to the store and find a gumball machine with a top in it for a quarter using go off oh, all top suck right but they do in the industry so doing amazing work not only is going to get you people calling you back it's going to make you more money because you're going to get a ton of referrals it's going to build your craft but it's also going to take your company to another level. And it's also going to help the industry. If I have a bunch of amazing window cleaners in my area and I get to a job and they go, oh man, you know, my guy retired or he moved or he, you know, whatever, but they were the best. They did such an amazing job. They were so nice. They were, yes, those are big shoes to fill, but guess what? They expect that now. They know the industry is legit. And if I say, hey, I got to charge you this, I'm like, oh, it's a little bit more than my last guy. But I bet you it's worth it. They know that it's worth it. You affect price. You affect uh, how we're looked at. You affect the um, need or the want. People are like, I got to get a window cleaner. They do it so much better than I would. All that is affected by doing good work. By the way, if you're listening, I had to take a swig of coffee. Throw it super dry. Anyway, so it's the it's the crappy work thing. Just do good work, and I'm telling you, it will help you all across the board. Um, do good work. It's it sounds stupid, I know, but you can affect an industry that way. Um, another one is uh, charging more because the house is expensive. So if you go to do a job and the house is difficult and there's lots of windows, awesome. But if you're just charging areas, certain areas of your town way more because they're in the richer part of town and you're not actually offering any more services, I find that morally wrong. And again, if that's what you do, I don't care. Either way, uh, you can tell me I'm dumb in the comments there on YouTube, but uh, it's your prerogative. Your company, whatever you do is right. But doing that screws up the industry in this way. If you charge more for a house when the next person goes to do it, say you no longer do their service or you stop that area or you retire or whatever, the next person who goes to that house and they get bid, they're going to come in and go, no, this is the price. And now those people are going to be, yeah, 
that price, and you're not going to do a good job for that price. We were charged way more for that. We had them for five years. It's a great job. Well, yeah, I, I do an amazing job. I'll do great, but this is the price. And I've had that before where I'm convincing somebody to pay me less to give me a shot. I've done that on two houses that I actually know of. And uh, I would say, you know, I know they charge you more and I, I could charge you more for it if you want. And sometimes people, you know, laugh and sometimes people just get offended. But the big thing is, is that if a house is difficult, now we've all had houses, even smaller cookie cutter houses where you show up and you're like, whoa, I had a house with an addition on the back that the addition had 70 something windows, full panes. They like put like this greenhouse addition on the back of their two story house. So it was an entire house and like a big giant greenhouse. And it was in a little normal neighborhood, cookie cutter neighborhood. So I'm going to have to charge those people like two times or more than any other house. And that's just because of the work. But if you're just going in and saying, hey, this is a big house, I got to charge more. It's not super, it, it just can ruin the image inside the, the, the scope of the, the industry itself. Now, earning it is different. Don't get me wrong. Earning it is different. If the house is big and it needs to be charged, charge accordingly. Don't step over dollars and make pennies. But don't overcharge just because it's in a neighborhood. Because that kind of screws up. And I don't think that that's right anyway. But who am I? You're right no matter what you do. But that kind of puts on the same thing there. Uh, in um, charging more versus. Because you're not going to a low income spot and going, oh, this is only $20. Because you know, you're in a lower income. Like That doesn't just charge accordingly for your time of work and your difficulty letter. If something's a P to charge more. Um, and that same side, there's another thing that is looking professional. Now, I talk about this all the time. I right now do not look professional because I'm sitting in my office, right? But it happens to be something that really does kind of break the industry down a little bit is if there's guys out there who show up on a bicycle smoking a cigarette with a grocery bag full of towels and everybody's got these guys out there they show up the bucket bobs and they're like, mm, yeah i'm here we had uh, a guy who was called the boob looker um we took a job we took a bunch of jobs from the guy actually it took at least like probably four that i that i was told about and he literally was, that was like his nickname was the boob looker. And it was because he wouldn't talk to anybody. He would just stare at their chests and like he'd be doing work and just staring. It was super creepy. Nobody liked this guy. But he was the guy who showed up. Sometimes he'd take the bus. Sometimes he'd take the bike. He would show up in a with an Aldi grocery bag, grocery bag, if you know what an Aldi is. Now, mind you, you have to pay for Aldi bags. There are 15 cents or something. But he'd show up with one of those. All his towels and tools, he'd show up to the restaurant and he would just dump the bag out on a table and like sift through the stuff and then start cleaning. That was literally what he did. Now, I am not hating on hustle. Never would I hate on hustle. But when you show up like that and then the next company, we show up in uniforms. We have name tags and star systems and we have uh, 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 tools that match and we have our logos and everything we can and our trucks look amazing and clean and our techs don't smell like cigarettes and, and just uh, look gross. Those people didn't maybe didn't even know that existed in the industry. They go, wow, man, I just thought this was... How many times? People are like, oh, I didn't even know window cleaning was a thing. I just thought it was like, you know, bums on the street with the spray. That's because that's what they've seen showing up in a professional side all of a sudden they look at it and go oh gosh yeah i want you guys to do you don't you're you you talk appropriately you you know can conduct yourself right now all of a sudden they're not looking at price at all they go oh well that's why you know this other guy was so cheap he was just horrible what he did changing the ideas of what we are in the industry helps the entire industry it, it helps the entire industry because then people know that a professional company, like any other company, exists. It's like when you tell somebody who's not in the industry, like, I'm going to the huge convention. It's a window cleaning and pressure washing convention. What? Yeah, it's in Atlanta. There's like 2,000 people that show up. I can't even know it was a thing. Yeah, of course you didn't because that's not your worry. It's mine, right? I'm in the industry. The industry, again, has that kind of... Um, 
you know, secretive side to it, which is kind of cool, I think. But it's the same thing. When you show up as a professional company and you have everything lined up, look at these guys that post on Facebook. Some of these guys are to the T. They are just so crystal clean cut. It's an entire professional operation. And people are like, wow, yeah, those guys. Like, that's the way the industry should be portrayed portrayed because then nothing affects the price people aren't looking and go well this guy's cheaper Uh, i can kind of tolerate that guy they're not looking at they're looking at this going whoa look at these dudes what is this machine you use i'm watching you guys use a, a machine to wash screens that's why that thing sells so many jobs people see it and they go i've never seen anybody have that last guy showed up and he wiped it down with some dirty rags yeah that's why we charge you three to five dollars per screen to use this piece of equipment, right? There's a lot of uh, benefits that come from that. Just just showing professionalism not only makes the you feel better, it makes the job easier to sell, it makes people want you longer because nobody compares to you, but it changes the idea of our image, uh, of our industry. The image of the industry then changes to super, super professional. When you think doctors, what do you think? When you think lawyers, let's do that. When you think lawyers, what comes to mind? Yeah, the guy in your head's wearing a suit right now. He's wearing a suit. His hair looks great. He or she, right? Nice shoes, briefcase. That's a lawyer. You don't think of some guy in sweatpants, right? That's like the public defendant lawyer, right? That That is what a idea is. That's why when you go to a lawyer, you know it's going to be expensive. It's because you're not expecting to have the guy show up in sweatpants. Change your professional, change the image of yourself. You change the image of the industry. And it differentiates you. So do that. Be better that way. And the big one and the reason I wanted to do this show is a lowballing. Now, again, I'm nobody. I'm just some guy that sits in a pink chair <laughs> with stickers behind him. I know that. So take this with a grain of salt. But if you... Oh, here's the other thing. I've never, ever, ever met anybody in the entire spectrum of window cleaning that said they were the lowest in the industry. They were, I'm the lowest in my town. I'm the lowest price. But they're all there. There's a lot of people who go, oh yeah, no, with everything that's going on right now, I slash my prices in half. I, I do this, you know... This uh, window cleaning special, and uh, it's uh, 20 windows for 50 bucks. I do, you know, a dollar a window on a house. Or uh, I do gutter cleaning for 20 bucks just to get me on this. If you're doing that, not only are you leaving money on the table, you're, you're, ruining, you're ruining the idea anybody else can come in and charge a regular price. Here's the thing. You should, at minimum and i don't care your customers aren't different uh your area is not different right you are at 65 dollars an hour minimum let's change let's say 60 you're at 60 dollars a man hour minimum in window cleaning if you're not there your prices are too low if you're not there you're uh the low baller in the industry I know guys who are making $25 an hour. Now, I'm not talking about cleaning for somebody else. Obviously, there has to be money trickle through the whole thing. But I'm saying production time, they're producing $25 hours. For $25 an hour, you're not running a business. You're working. You you could go pick stuff off a shelf at Amazon for $20. You're losing. You're, You're not building a healthy company at all. And the next guy who's going to inevitably take that job, because at $25 an hour, it's I can't see you growing much over that. The next guy's coming in at the normal rate at, say, $65, $75 an hour, man hour. And those people are going, whoa, no, my last guy charged me $112. You're trying to charge me $300. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm going to find some. Well, why did the other guy not finish? Why did the other guy not do your windows? Oh, uh, he retired. Yeah, he retired and had nothing to sell. He wasn't building a company. He was just making beer money. Uh, yeah, my last guy charged three times the cost. He charged me 90 bucks. You're trying to charge me 300. 
Why didn't she use that guy again? I can't get a hold of him. His phone is disconnected. You think? You think? So don't be a lowball. A lowballers ruin the industry that way. Now, I'm not saying, okay, let's go. Everybody get together and we need to raise prices. That's not only is that illegal, I'm pretty sure. But uh, it's it's that's not beneficial. We're not trying to, and th- this is the other thing. If you are a lowballer, don't take offense to that. But if you're somebody who charges way less than anybody else anywhere, you're the guy who then says, well, oh, you guys charging 60 bucks an hour, you're just ripping people off. You're just trying to make a billion dollars and taking advantage of people. No, no, you're wrong. You're so absolutely wrong. Charge the right price once. Just charge the right price. You can spend the time you need to. You can have the tools you need to. How are you guys out there buying $5,000, or we'll go with the cheap one, $3,000 pure water systems and making 20 bucks an hour? Why would anybody do that? Those are the guys that go to Lowe's and Home Depot to buy their squeegees. Oh, this one's only $10. It lasts me six months, but yeah. Let me guess. You're the guy that charges 20 bucks an hour. You can't be in business. You can't have insurance and trucks that look nice and logo on a letter. You know, a polo cost me 20 bucks. That's nice. I buy, you know, 20, 30 of them at a time so that we have them and I can change them out. Like, you can't do that at 20. You just can't. That's why CEOs of some companies, too, are making a million dollars a year. And people are like, that's too much money. Not for what they're worth. Not for what they're doing. What they bring to the table is something that nobody else can bring to the table. That's you. You have to be that. Raise your prices if you're low. The other thing is if you're going to go out there and you're selling only on price, you're only ever going to get people who are interested in price. And if somebody's only interested in price, guess what? The next lowballer that comes by and goes, well, you know, this guy here, John Doe, is doing it for 25 an hour. I'll do it for 20 an hour. Well, if this other guy... John Doe number two is doing it for 20 an hour. I got to be at 15 an hour. You're racing to the bottom. Never, 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 never. Now, when you're new in business, this is a very hard concept because you want to close 100%. But if I ever get to a place and somebody says, um, oh, my last guy only charged me $100. You're trying to charge me $300. You get that because there's people out in the industry. I always say, oh, uh, why did you not go with them again? And as soon as I say that, the answer is what makes them go, oh, right? And I just ask it as a question, well, I'm sorry, you know, um, our prices are where they are, you know, having full insurance coverage and uh, having the best state-of-the-art equipment is kind of what we pride ourselves in for a company. And we do have to charge more, but I'm telling you we're worth it. And here's why. I throw it out there. You got to put the price out there. If price is what you talk about, McDonald's sells a burger for a buck. Guess how they advertise that? They don't advertise a, a, a McDonald's cheeseburger. This beautifully crafted, delicious burger is absolutely mouth-watering, culinary, delicious. No. They go, get a burger for only a buck. Because that's what they're selling it on. When you sell on price... You don't expect quality because you know you're not getting it. When you buy a burger for a buck, you know you're getting a buck burger, a buck's worth of burger, right? Now, if you go to a steakhouse and that steakhouse has a picture, 100% ground uh, prime rib with a truffle oil and uh, a fresh Baked today brioche bun with an aioli mayo. I've just described the burger. I didn't tell you how much it cost. All that stuff I'm telling you, you know, fresh, you know, hand-picked tomatoes. And when you go through all that, you're saying, here's where I want your attention to be. It's not on price. If people talk about their fries, the cheapest thing in the world to make. These are hand-cut French fries. Toasted to a, you know, fried to a golden brown, salted to perfection with natural sea salt. They want you to look at that and go, wow, those are good fries. I got to have those. If they say, get a thing of fries for a buck. 
Well, then you you don't go, man, those are so good, I need to have them. You go, wow, that's cheap. I should have fries, it's only a dollar. There's a difference in how you put that out there. And that's where these lowballers come out. They just come out there and all they do, and especially now, you're going to see a lot of it right now, is people who are just focused on that price because that's the thing that the, the reason they think this is coming back. I had somebody else say that they um, are lowering their prices all across the board 20% because that's how they're going to get back into the market. No. If it's not in somebody's brain, don't lowball. It's not going to get back in their brain. Don't be a lowballer. Either way, I know you're doing epic. I know you're doing awesome. I know your company is going to do amazing. Hopefully, everything in your world is getting better with everything that's going on. Uh, it seems to be coming back. A lot of states are going back online. People are buying equipment, which brings me to my shameless plug. If you need equipment, my name is Jersey. Like the state. Save it in your phone. My number is 862 312 2026. 862 312 2026. Did you save it? That's awesome. Uh, let me know when and where, what, what. Just let me know when you need something. Shoot me a text. I love when people put it all in their cart too and then be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. My cart ending in one, two, three, four. My address is the same. Those are awesome because you know what? They did everything and they took the time to let me put that in. And it means a lot. I mean, guys, really, the people who put the orders in through me, every order, it's amazing. That's literally how I live. So thank you guys. Um, The code for today, by the way, is... um, Let's do epic. Epic is the code this week. Because I didn't write one down to have anything to do with the episode. But this week's code is epic. If you shoot me a text, call me, email me, whatever, and say the code epic, you'll get 5% off and free shipping. Now, mind you, I want to bring this up too because some people think that this is different. But I can't... We're not adding discounts on top of discounts on top of discounts. If something's on sale, I can't give you a discount on the sale price. And if, you know, you have other discounts or something, then that's not the thing. But I still would love to put it in, even if uh, if there's anything I can do for you. So let me know. Anyway, whatever. I'm rambling. Have a great week. Go out there and uh, kill it. Uh, don't ruin the industry, which I know you're not. But most importantly, go out there and be epic.